Let's take a look at a couple of new features in Metrics 2016.2. Requested for many years is the ability for Metrics to deal with a run list. I'm going to do this a couple different ways. I'll start out with a simple saddle stitch book. And as you might know if you're familiar with Metrics in the past, the way that we deal with content assignment has always been to select the product and then down here in the properties navigate to a single content file or find that single content file somewhere on the file system and drag and assign it to the product. It's a little bit different now. We now have a new tab here called Run List. When a product is first created, its pages will be either unassigned or blank. If they're blank, it means you intend to leave them blank. You don't intend to put any content there. It's done. You don't want content. You're going to use an unpopulated prepress workflow. The alternative, and for many people, and the reason to have this feature is where there is an assumption, an expectation, you will assign content, but it's in an error state because there is no content yet assigned. So how do we assign content? It's pretty amazing, actually. I'm going to do this not by grabbing a single file, but by grabbing three separate files and bringing them into metrics. So I have here the... Um, cover in the first 12 pages, a second file with pages 13 to 15, and the rest of the pages. And there's really two ways I could do it. I could take these files and drag them into the run list at the top here, and I'll do this in some examples where they would be unassigned, and then secondarily drag them down to assign them to page slots in the run list. Or I could just grab a file like this and drag it right onto, in this case, the first page, so it'll assign the first 12 pages you can see at the top up here, there's the file we assigned, the individual pages. Each has a green check mark indicating it's been assigned to a single page. And we can see it's waiting for 13 onward. You'll notice some errors with the colors. We'll get to that in a secondary movie. Let's take and do these ones differently just for the sake of showing how it can be done differently. I'll drag these into metrics. But I'm going to grab 13 to 15 and drag them down onto 13. That will assign them downward, and then 16 to 24, and assign those. Now everything has been assigned, and the book would be complete. Of course, we can go back to the product view, look at a particular layout, preview it, and there's the pages. So it's a very, very convenient way to assign pages. Uh, on the simplest level, which I've shown you here, we just grab one or more content files, drag them directly into the run list here below or into the file list above and then selectively drag them down. As an example of when that might be desirable, let's take a look at a second example where we have a book that's been completed. It has pages assigned to it, but then the customer sends in some replacement pages. We have a new page four and a new page eight. So I'm gonna grab those two Again, I could drag them here or I could assign them directly. I'm just going to pop them. Oh, it looks like I only did one of them. I'll pop them into the file list first of all. Then I will grab page four, make sure I can see page four in the list here. So I have my fourth page. Now, I don't know if this is actually the fourth page or page four. I guess it doesn't really matter um, in this context here for demonstration purposes, but I'll grab this one and assign it to the fourth page. It says they already have signed content. You want to continue? Yes. And you can see that it has assigned that one or replaced the one that was there before. Page 8 would work in similar fashion, replacing page 8. Incredibly simple. Just works as you'd expect it to. Let's take a look at a second example, just a little bit of a different wrinkle on this theme. Let's go ahead and open up Project 2. Project 2 is a simple rack card, a flat project. Let's look at its run list. Of course, it's empty right now. We have the rack card. It's just got pages 1 and 2. In the past, you had to have a single PDF file. You don't anymore. You could just grab page 1, assign that to the front, page 2, assign it to the back. Couldn't be easier. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Project 3. 
This one's a multi-page or multi-panel brochure folded product. Now this one's a little bit unique because as you know, there's a couple ways that this could work. In the past, what we would probably typically have done is combine these pages. We would have, because here's the thing, in the past, this always this has been a six page product. And so technically it has six page slots, but it's kind of unusual for customers to supply us six individual pages 100% of the time. So some of the time, enough of the time, what we've done in the past is taken the product combine the pages so that we're expecting one page for the front and one for the back. And we can still do that. But I'm going to show the opposite example. Let's just hit undo here on the keyboard. So we still have six individual pages. The run list is still expecting six. And I have six panel pieces over here. Now, if I'm lucky, and I think I am in this case, that I or the customer has created these in an ordered sequence that match the expected sequence of the folding pattern. I think I've done it right. Let's see if I am right. I just drag these, assign the first one to the first one. They're all assigned. Let's go ahead and look at the product. And this looks correct to me. There's the front. Yep, that looks great. Let's look at the inside and there's my inside spread. And to be clear, these are separate pages that have come in as six individual panels. Incredibly simple. Sometimes you'll bring it in, of course, and you'll find that the sequence didn't work, and so you have to move some of the pages around and reassign them. But it's incredibly simple. A page can be dragged, as we've seen before, to override or reassign another position. If we knew a page was wrong, we could simply take that page. We could say that page is now unassigned. Oops. I did all of them. I shouldn't have done that. Let me hit undo. You can unassign individual pages, reassign them. It's an incredibly convenient way to change the assignment of pages as the product evolves throughout its life cycle. Now the last one here is a little bit different. I'm going to show this business card example to you two completely different ways. And I'm going to start this out by importing a project this is going to be a CSV file with a list of business cards. So here's all the cards that are part of this project. And I need to assign content to them. Now clearly the easiest way would have been that the CSV file contained the link to the PDFs, but let's assume it didn't. They weren't available yet. The customer is sending them at a different time. So I need to assign content to each of these. Now, under the best of circumstances in previous metrics versions, this was time consuming because every product had to be dealt with separately. It's a little bit simpler now. And again, I'll show you two different ways this could work. In the first example, I have one PDF file that's common for all the fronts and a secondary PDF file that has 26 PDFs or 26 pages, all 26 cards in that file. Let's just grab both of these here. Actually, I'm going to bring the card front in first, and we'll deal with it by itself. First of all, I need to realize that I don't want to do content assignment to just Carla Warren's card. As we, I can see just those two pages here. I'd like to select the entire products list so I see everything. Now, I certainly don't want to assign this front to everything. I want to assign it only to the fronts. Now, in case I'm thinking to myself, first of all, wait a minute, is this actually really meant to be the front of the card or the back? At any point, you can simply right click on a page and it brings up a preview of that file. Okay, so that is in fact the front. So what I would do is go down to the list below here and I would say, instead of show all, show all the fronts. So now I have all the fronts listed but here's the thing, if I simply drag this down, it will only assign it to the one that I have dragged it onto. If I hold down the control key and drag it down, oops, it assigns it to all of them. So all the fronts have instantly been assigned that page or that uh, PDF file there, that one page PDF. Now, of course, I'd like to go to the backs, which are intended to all be different. And I have a single PDF file and it's just this simple. We drag it straight onto the first product. It assigns them in sequence. And all these products now, if I go and look at them and preview them, the front, of course, should be common. And that's true. The back, of course, should be 
different from product oops different from product to product it's just incredibly simple now to assign content to products whether I have a single PDF or and let's look at the secondary example here whether I have multiple PDFs so let's just refresh this product or project by bringing that CSV file and again of course the run list is empty so we'll look at a different way of doing it and here I still have if I scroll down the card front so I'll do the same thing as I did before I'll list all the fronts control key drop it on they've all been assigned I'll show all the backs and in this case I could grab all these cards and again I could drag them directly into the file list and sequentially assign them manually as I wish or I could just drag them straight into the list here It'll take a moment and there they all are so two ways to really do the same thing and it all depends on what the source files that the customer has given me sometimes the customer is going to give me one file that has everything in it sometimes I get 150 separate files it's really now the same effort to assign them in metrics at any point if things should change like um, customers change the page we saw how we could drag that in there's also the ability to come in preview things and say that's uh, and actually this is quite helpful I should mention this as well when we do the preview we see the colors that are in the file that's something metrics has never reported to you before we can see the trim box size that's been pulled out of it and the media size so this is a small trim box on a larger piece of media I can also go to a product down below and I can unassign it or say this one's meant to be blank another thing that can be quite helpful let's go back to the book here project one and let's just take everything out of here first of all okay it might be the case that we want a blank page in a project so we now have the ability to click this show blank page metrics puts this fake little thing at the top it's just a blank page and that blank page can be dragged down and assigned to content positions if that's the way some people are used to working in other systems and I know there's other systems that work kind of that way it's just a way that we don't have to have a blank page assigned in the content ahead of time we can fill it in directly this way some people will find that convenient um, I should say this is not a comprehensive view of the way that the run list works there's all kinds of other things that can be done so certainly look in the documentation there's other things um, I just haven't covered here Thanks for taking a look at the content as it relates to the run list.